Hello, I'm BJ Ansara, Tech Service Rep for the Aerosol and Cylinder Adhesive Systems. Today we're going to talk about the upcoming Scotch Weld Cylinder Launch. Pretty exciting, I hope you're excited. As you can see behind me here, we have a pretty new look, a lot more sizes available than we used to. Let me start here with our smallest new offering. This is going to be referenced as the Mini, and this is going to be equal to about two and a half gallons of adhesive. Next in line, we have what we're referencing as the Large. This, you may recognize being a similar size to our current portfolio of cylinders. This is about five gallons of adhesive. Next, stepping up, we have what we'll be calling the intermediate, and this is about 25 gallons of adhesive. Next to that, we have the jumbo, and this is the equivalent of about 50 gallons of adhesive. So as you can see, we really are offering a bulk alternative. One thing I want you to recognize here is that there is a little different look to the adhesive cylinders in the mini and the large. These are disposable cylinders, and they're very simple. There's a friable disc here. When you're all done, expelled all of the adhesive, you simply take off the hose, take off the hose here, make sure that the valve is all the way open and nothing's coming out so that you do have an empty cylinder. Then you puncture this disc right here. Once you've done that, you have scrap metal here that you'll need to check with your local regulations as far as how to dispose of, it, but it's scrap metal. The two larger cylinders in the back, the intermediate and the jumbo, they kind of have a, a look uh, similar to our existing ones, and these are returnable units. So that system is going to be very similar to our existing returnable cylinder system, and that information will be available to you on the label and in the literature we're going to provide. So we've talked about the new cylinders and the different sizes available. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the equipment. As you can see here, the applicator guns look the exact same as the current units that we sell. And that's because they are. There is one difference. We're going to be offering two different applicators. And the only difference is, in this area, I don't know if you can see it or not, there will be a stamped H. There will be different part numbers, and this applicator gun will be called out in the literature for certain adhesives. Over here we have a couple different nozzles. We have them, and I don't know again if you can see, but right on the front there's a number. This particular one says 6501. The first two digits represents the angle of the spray pattern that's going to come out. So we're going to have available a 95, a 65, and a 40. And that's just going to give you some control over the spray pattern. This oddball looking one here this again will be called out in the literature. This is called the QSS, and this is for one specific adhesive to give a good spray pattern. One other difference with our equipment that you may see here is the hoses. We are now going to have three lengths available, a 6-foot hose, a 12-foot hose, and a 25-foot hose. I don't know if the camera will show you, but this new hose, we, we listen to the complaints out there, is extremely flexible and easy to use. Our old hose, as you can tell, was very stiff and rigid and sometimes uh, caused some complaints with the users that it was difficult to work with. So we're excited about that. Okay, so now we've talked about the new cylinders and the applicator equipment. Now let's see how easy this system is. Here's all you need. You need your cylinder, an applicator gun, a hose, and a wrench. First thing you're going to want to do is check the applicator and close the trigger locking nut all the way. That's just a safety precaution. doesn't allow you to trigger. Then you're going to want to take the hose. The hose has two different size fittings. The larger size goes onto the applicator gun. Simply screw it on. Hand tight. Then take the wrench and just snug it. Don't crank it very hard. Okay. Then you're going to want to take the other size, the smaller fitting, and hook it up to the hose. Very simple. Hand snug, then take your wrench. And tighten. So we didn't quite have it. And that's about it. You are now ready to spray adhesive. Okay, so we just showed how simple it is to hook up the system. Now the first thing we're going to want to do before we use it is we want to check for leaks. So looking at both of the connections we just made, slowly crack open the valve and look for leaks. If we don't have any, 
We're good to go. If we did, we'd simply want to shut the valve, get our wrench and tighten a little bit, a little bit more. Okay? We have no leaks, so we're going to open the tank all the way. Now I'd like to show you, first thing we did, right, we had the trigger lock still on there, so I can't spray, even with the valve open. So we're going to want to open this on our initial shoot, about three or four turns, not very far, and spray. Let's see what we've got. So there you can see a beautiful, nice, even spray pattern at about three turns. This locking nut is a safety, but it also is going to give you variation in your spray pattern. So let's open it a little bit more and see how our pattern changes. Okay, a little bit wider. This product, as you can see, has a green tint to it. Uh, helps with the demonstration, but it's also nice to know that some of our products uh, in, this, in this launch are going to have colors. Uh, one is green, and a couple of our laminated adhesives will be red. So, again, we're listening to you guys out there. One thing I want to show you, this is our lace pattern that you've seen in the past. Everybody's probably familiar with this. We also have one product coming out that has a pebble spray, and I want to show you that because it is a different look to it, and I want you to be familiar. So I'm done here. Every time you're done with a, a spray, even if you're talking for a little bit, lock it up. It's just safe. So again, our applicator looks the exact same. This actually is a unit. The pebble spray uses the H. I don't know if you can see that, but this would be called, called out on this product. So again, we're locked. Let's open it up just a couple turns and spray. Now, <clears throat> let me spray up here so that you can see the difference in the look. Quite a bit different than a lace spray. This has low telegraphing. This is nice for laminating and uh, veneers and stuff that's very thin where you don't have to worry about that pattern, that texture you get from the lace sprays. So those are two big differences that we have that you'll need to recognize before you go out and demo these products. Okay. There are a couple other things I'd like to talk about with regard to these products and understanding them so that you can give a good value sell. You just saw we hooked this thing up very simply. We're good to go. We're already spraying and putting parts together. Now while using these products, what I want to show you, let me open that up again, is that spray distances are very important for the lace sprays particularly. Just like in the aerosol can, we've had training. We show that it comes up in a pattern, like a football, and then collapses. Not sure if we can see it here or not. But where we would want to be spraying is right when that initial peak happens. So it's about four inches from the nozzle. That's going to give us a nice, clean edge. If we get further away, you see what happens? This is not how we want to be spraying. Very inefficient. We're going to be wasting a lot of glue for one, and we've got a lot of hollow spots versus one pass. Nice and clean. Adhesive almost everywhere. You want one pass to have about 80 to 85, 90% adhesive. A little bit of opening. If we need a heavier coat, we want to get there in multiple passes. Okay? So another thing, let me spray down here. We want to understand dry times. People want to make bonds immediately. These new adhesives are wonderfully fast. Usually about a minute is all we need to wait before we can make a bond. Simplest way. Same with the aerosols. We simply test with our knuckle. So you can see my knuckle. Hopefully you can see there. That's still wet. That's a little too fast. So we have to wait about a minute. We keep checking with our knuckle. Still a little wet. Hurry up and dry. I can tell it's getting very, very tacky though now. If you keep tap, tap, tapping with a wet knuckle, that's not going to be good. So you're going to want to change your knuckles or wash your hands. In about a minute, you can see how aggressively tacky that is right there. And we're ready to go. So that's very important to remember open times for successful bonding. Okay? I think what we'd like to do is go into a couple uh, demonstrations here. This particular product is green. This is a polystyrene bonder. The first demonstration I'm going to do is going to be with this product. Okay, so now that we know how to spray the adhesive, let's talk a little bit about applications. As I said, I was using product that we're going to be calling 78ET. The ET stands for extended tack. This product is going to be like our, our current 78, whereas it, it can be used on polystyrene foam without dissolving or cavitating the foam. So let's put some pieces together here. Always test. We're going to want to spray off the surface and off the surface. Coming back. Overlap. Nice and easy. 
What's nice about this adhesive is it's very, very tacky and it's got an open time of well over an hour. Okay, we talked about how fast this is. We do need to wait about a minute. As we give that time to flash off, I want to explain that we could have definitely done this two surface and you see me spraying both and you probably think I'm gonna put them together, but I'm gonna stack these. This actually simulates um, an application could be in, in the roofing, commercial roofing, flat roofing industry, where they're building up layers, or in stage prop, assembly to build up layers of polystyrene foam. You see how fast that was? Very strong, very fast, one surface. The green has is, is been called for by people because they have a tough time seeing the adhesive on, on a white foam. So hopefully that helps. So uh, give you some ideas on where to take this product and sell. This, you are going to want to spray two surfaces with this product. Again, we'll open it up. A couple turns, see where we're at. This one, as you can see, comes out with a lot more force than the last product I showed you. So we're going to want to move a little bit faster, okay? Okay. You can see that, nice looking, very uniform, even coverage. We're going to want to give this about a minute. Simply test with the knuckle test. This can be used for a lot of different things, whether it's cabinet making, um, RVs and boats, carpeting, um, lots and lots of applications. Still a little bit wet. You can tell it's really starting to get some tack now. Okay. Now this is going to act like a contact adhesive. So you can see I'm almost kind of putting a little bend to it. I don't want to trap air in there. Line it up and come across. Okay. With any contact adhesive, pressure is very, very important. Start again in the middle, work your way around, back and forth, as much pressure as you can. A nip roller would be great for an application like this. But if not, a J roller with sufficient pressure works very well. So that really wraps up the demonstration part I want to show you. But there's a couple key points I want you to remember and go away with. First of all, we want to focus on converting bulk adhesive business with the lowest total cost solution. This system, I hope I've showed, is extremely convenient. It's a portable system. It allows for greater productivity than bulk systems. There's essentially no equipment or equipment maintenance. 100% product is applied. It's a completely self-contained system. High solids, very fast. So remember, we're competing against bulk adhesives with the value proposition of an aerosol. We're very excited about this system and I hope you are as well. If you have any technical questions about this, please don't hesitate to call us. Good luck and good selling.